Ritual provides structure in nature. All animals have rituals. Some are beauty itself, like many courtship dances, which for centuries have impressed and influenced humans. Other animal rituals have more dangerous undertones, such as battles for territory, hierarchy, and the right to mate. There is a symmetry in the animal world that promotes coexistence. Because of this, most animals go to great lengths to avoid serious fights, unless it means survival. they are necessary, these confrontations can be breathtaking. I'm Marty Stauffer. Join me as we witness a variety of rituals I call spectacular showdowns. Many animals migrate from one environment to another, depending on the availability of food. Along the Chilkat River in Alaska, bald eagles by the thousands fly in to feed on an abundant source of protein. For the eagles, it's a time of renewal, but not without first competing for a place at the banquet table.
These autumn confrontations over relatively abundant food pale in comparison to the struggles of winter. Here in Alaska, a wolf pack congregates at a moose kill. The alpha male reasserts his dominance over the pack. But competition for this scarce winter food supply is about to escalate. Enter the wolverine. It's one third the size of a wolf, but don't let that fool you. The wolverine is the ultimate scavenger, surviving on the fringes of the food chain. This bear cat, unsurpassed for its strength and endurance, is a savage loner and a ferocious fighter. No match for the tenacious wolverine. Bloodied and exhausted, the wolf, now alone, goes to find the pack and leaves the prize to the hungry wolverine. not the only reason for showdowns in the animal world. We're now in Pennsylvania. All summer, the white-tailed deer have lived in quiet harmony, the bucks separate from the does. But as the leaves turn their fall colors, the tempo of life quickens for the white tail. Tensions run high as bucks and does are drawn together. At this time of year, the deer in a given area have formed a loosely knit herd. A buck following a doe in heat often enters the territory of another buck. tucked under tails and laid back ears, give notice that rivalry among these magnificent equals is about to come to blows.
Some of the does may scatter. The winner is the buck with enough stamina to follow. This is nature's way of assuring that only the strongest males reproduce. Certain animals, like the prickly porcupine, are specially equipped for showdowns. Porcupines are solitary rodents, though males have been known to share their home ranges and even forage in the same tree. But when breeding season nears in late fall, disputes over dominance are common. porcupine cannot throw its quills, but on contact, they do dislodge with ease. Quills are not poisonous. In fact, they're covered with fatty acids, which act as topical antibiotics. The porcupine's insurance policy against suffering a serious infection from its own best weapon. Other animals, like skunks, have weapons they don't use when fighting among themselves. Skunks often den together in cold climates to share warmth. Here in Upper Michigan, the coming winter gives a sense of urgency to this fattened male striped skunk. It hurries to renovate an abandoned fox den. Although a dozen skunks may congregate, there will never be more than one adult male. If another male tries to encroach, a bloody battle is sure to ensue. Strangely, skunks are careful not to release spray which could smell up their own fur, and so do not resort to chemical warfare when fighting among themselves. Contests between males can go on for over an hour and sometimes result in death. The loser will need to fashion itself a snug burrow before winter hits. So nature has insulated it with a two inch thick layer of body fat, buying it the time it will need to seek another haven. For the winter, there's no time to celebrate. It's bedtime.
The high altitudes of the Rocky Mountains are a perfect setting for one of the most impressive confrontations in the animal kingdom. In a classic autumn ritual between bighorn sheep, the rams, sporting enormous horns, vie for the right to be king of the mountain, and with it, the right to mate. Usually, the ram with the most impressive headgear dominates his male counterparts by simply displaying his horns. But when rams of equal size encounter each other, all-out combat is not uncommon. Heads slam together at 20 miles per hour.
evening, when most animals have settled in for the night, the fox is active, especially when scent marking territory to identify himself to receptive females. It's also his way of challenging rival males. Although some males will mate with more than one female in a season, the vixen of choice is jealously protected from unmated intruders. Encounters between males are sometimes just screaming contests, but more often they are fierce battles and can even be fatal. The battle ends in a standoff, with the resident male the apparent victor. He now chases the vixen and courts her with techniques very similar to those he just used on his rival. rival slinks away, perhaps to find an unguarded vixen of his own. Of the common reasons for animal showdowns, the right to mate, territorial disputes, and competition for food, hunger ranks high on the list as a source of conflict. This coyote in Yellowstone Park is a cunning carnivore even when it comes to the clever otter. Capable of outwitting almost any animal, the coyote is not above trying to steal the otter's fish. contest becomes more heated as a fellow opportunist arrives. But suddenly, the otter has more trouble than it bargained for.
Snatching the fish from the otter is only one small victory. To win the battle, he must keep it from the other coyotes. In the end, dominance, not chance, dictates which contender claims the prize. When it comes to disputes over food, perhaps none is so awesome as a showdown between a hungry grizzly and a pack of equally hungry wolves, especially in winter when food is scarce. Some fights over food are family affairs. This badger is digging up a cached ringneck pheasant. It notices another badger approaching its meal. One of the most ferocious sights in nature is badger fighting badger. This is only a minor squabble. physical makeup corresponds perfectly to a fierce fighting spirit. Its skin is tough, yet fits so loosely that if the animal is grabbed from behind, it can literally turn around inside its own skin and bite the attacker. And a bite from a badger is nothing to be taken lightly. The only way to open the jaw of a badger, unwilling to let go, is to break it. On occasion, Two are found dead with their jaws locked in a death grip. There's no question, a badger has definitely met its match in fighting another badger. This one quickly forgets about its excavation, reclaims its prize, and heads off to its winter sleeping den, leaving its hungry competitor behind.
Some showdowns are as much ritual as combat. I had read about one so rare it had never been captured on film and rarely even seen. I am venturing into this cave in Oklahoma to try to see it for myself. This ritual involves the most dangerous reptile in the United States, the Western Diamondback Rattlesnake, and its mysterious snake dance. I came prepared with a walking stick. It's the only way for me to clear a path through this slithering maze. The snakes are irritable, to be expected after a long winter fast. I've also angered them by moving them out of the way. So if I want to see the natural behavior of undisturbed snakes, I'll have to search deeper into the cave. Although it's risky, my curiosity overcomes my fear, and I continue further into the cave. I hope to see for myself the bizarre behavior displayed during the combat ritual that I've heard so much about. Western diamondbacks attain the largest den concentrations of all rattlesnakes, sometimes a thousand to a cave. This increases my chances of seeing a snake dance. Unfortunately, it also increases my chance of getting bitten. The shadowed walls seem to be crawling with snakes, but luckily the cave is fractured with holes which allow sunlight to filter through. Directly ahead of me, I see a male and female engaged in courtship behavior. The jerking motion of the male's head as he slithers over the female's body is a prelude to mating. Suddenly, a second male approaches from the rock above. Finally, a chance to witness one of the strangest rituals found in nature. The courting male rises up to meet the challenger, and the two rivals begin swaying rhythmically.
This combat dance is an amazing example of the truth being even stranger than the tall stories about rattlesnakes. It was first believed that the snakes, twisting about and seemingly linked together, were mating. Now it's known that only males perform this symbolic dance. It has also been observed between males of different species and at different times of year, sometimes without a female nearby. What exactly stimulates the males to dance is not clear, but the goal seems obvious, to establish sexual dominance. With almost half of their bodies poised upright, the opponents rock back and forth until one senses an advantage and throws the other off balance. As their excitement builds, the momentum of the dance quickens. Lacking arms and legs, the snakes wrestle by literally throwing their weight around. The wrestling match seems to be a test of coordination as well as of strength. This exhausting dance can go on for several hours, but snakes are very strong for their size. Pound for pound, they have more muscle tissue than any other animal. We humans could learn a valuable lesson from these ancient reptiles, whose contests are settled without any intent to kill their opponent. Not too far from the cave home of the rattler is the southwestern home of another reptile, the desert tortoise. Unlike the rattlesnake, the tortoise looks slow and benign, but looks can sometimes deceive. The truth is, it can be a fierce fighter for territory and mating rights. Its ritual struggle is a battering battle. Here, two males come together during the mating season. The object of this armored wrestling match is not only to defend a territory and win a female, but to render the opponent helpless. weapon is a horny projection from their lower shells called a gular shield. Each tries to wedge his underneath the other. Like prehistoric knights in armor, one finally succeeds. The desert hosts many dangers, and the most relentless is the sun itself. Unless the loser can right himself quickly, he is doomed.
Not only can the same species be ferocious in battle with one another, cousins can compete just as fiercely. In this rare encounter, the lynx has a slight advantage in size, weight, and reach. But the bobcat has the even more important advantage of a ferocious disposition. Long-legged lynx, with its large, broad feet, is perfectly adapted to snowy country. Yet it is the one that retreats, leaving the bobcat to relish its moment of victory. A scary showdown comes on the rare occasion when this small bear cub is alone and is confronted by an aggressive cougar. It's a good thing this little cub did not wander into a male bear's territory, because in the grizzly, solitary world, this is serious business. For territorial reasons, large males may sometimes kill small cubs. Adult grizzlies seldom come together, but when two large males meet and compete for one female, the result is nothing less than spectacular. Oh, my God. 
these battles are so ferocious, they can end in death. The female, which is much smaller than the males, watches from a safe distance as the winner assumes a dominant posture over the loser. Outside of these mating battles and a brief courtship period between male and female, the only other time that the solitary adult bears come together is during the annual salmon run. are natural swimmers and divers, as powerful in the water as they are on land. By midday, most of the bears in the area have gathered for what seems like a pleasant picnic. But things are not always so peaceful. A big boar is looking for a fishing spot in the afternoon sun. The big male is patient, or maybe he's just puzzled by all this frantic activity, but he doesn't stay puzzled for long. Almost always, the biggest bear claims the best fishing holes. But frequently, the question is, who is the biggest bear? fight sets off another. Although most fights are between males, when a female bear gets upset, fur can fly. Here in Olympic Park, the autumn colors portend more than just a change of season. It's time for elk to gather once again to propagate their kind. Restless bulls become more aggressive as each gathers up a harem of cows. When they congregate in groups for the fall rut, the sights and sounds are unforgettable. Haunting, high-pitched bugling reflects the bull's emotional intensity. Displays of dominance underscore his desire to keep his harem of cows intact. Females are shadowed by the younger bulls, but normally mate only with the dominant male.
The crisp fall air matches the tension that surges through the herd. When a challenger appears on a nearby ridge, the stage is set for battle. Bull elk expend an enormous amount of energy during the rut, taking little or no time to eat or rest. The dominant bull further depletes his strength by mating with every cow in his harem, making him particularly vulnerable. His chances of surviving a harsh winter are slim. But when the young ones are born in spring, a part of him lives on. This is nature's way with all living things. The vitality of each species is ensured by the timeless drama of spectacular showdowns. I'm Marty Stauffer. Until next time, enjoy our wild America. <laughs>